Hey there, everyone! It's Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus Dry Docks, uh, dot com and hiding in the back there. We got Jason and Logan's in the inventory room. It's Tuesday, not Monday, because yesterday we were driving back from Subfest. Um, I know on my odometer I did 1,960 miles over about 36 hours of driving, which was super exciting. That's there and back, not, not just back. Um, but it was all worth it. What do you think, Jason? It was a good time. I wish it wouldn't rain, but it was a really good time. Yeah. Could have had a little bit better turnout, but I think they're all afraid of the rain. Uh, yeah, it could be, but we, we had some genuine uh, 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 hang-ups for some people. There were mechanical issues and health issues and all sorts of things. So they get a pass. It's all good. Um, hopefully we'll have some awesome video up for you guys. Within the next week or two, there is a lot to go through. So if you're in a panic for Subfest photos and video, just hold on. They'll be coming. Um, there's like hours and hours and hours of footage I'm going to need to go through in order to delve it down into something reasonable. Um, but uh, returned the trailer yesterday, um, unloaded everything here today. That's all we've been working on so far. Um, unpacking everything. I'm happy to say... We got rid of a lot of overstock that we had and the shelves are looking nice and empty for our upcoming move coming up here in the next couple of weeks. Um, we got two boats to unpack here though. One of them is sold. It's a beautiful, apparently, we haven't opened them yet, uh, Angle Typhoon. And the other one is an OTW Knockin', which will be available. It's completely built uh, and ready to run. So we'll have some video of that probably coming up here in a minute. Um, another interesting development, you guys know we built uh, McDelphin for uh, Robert, uh, who showed up to the event, and it was awesome to meet him, uh, his mother, and his cousin. We had a great time there. Um, but he fell in love with the uh, little 212, our shop 212, the prototype that we had there, that 172nd 212. And so we worked out a deal, and uh, I'm kind of excited to say that uh, McDelphin came home with us. Um, that thing is insane. We had so much fun running it. Um, fastest RC sub that I have ever run or seen in person, bar none. Um, the other neat thing about it, because it is so big, it makes a massive wake in the water. Like it'll hump up a big like six inch wave over the top of the boat. Uh, and it creates waves that washed up on the shore as we drove it past. So it was so much fun. Um, this week we are going to be finishing up, uh, unpacking everything that we've got there. We got cylinders to finish up, uh, a custom cylinder and then a bunch of other ones that we've got going on. Plus some other work that we picked up at Subfest for some customers there. So we're going to get our feet underneath us and uh, be back in a minute. All right, we managed to get a little bit further. We got uh, the Type 9 um, unpackaged so that we can repackage it for the new owner. Um, he got that at Subfest, and uh, I am glad to be divested of it, although it would have been a lot better if he would have just picked it up there. I'm just saying. Um, we also managed to unpack those other two boats I'm super excited about. So the one that I was telling you about was uh, an Engel Typhoon. Let's take a look at that, baby. So beautiful, beautiful weathering on this boat. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, should be fully ready to go. We'll have a chance to tear into it here shortly over the course of the next couple of weeks, but we got to get our shop moved first. Um, so that is a gorgeous boat. Just a few little tiny minor details that got broken in the back and Logan's already actually fixed them. This came off and then we lost a little corner here. So little bit of work to do cosmetically, but um, we'll be delving into the technical aspect of it shortly. The other boat that we got is this uh, OTW Knockin, and I forgot just how big that boat is. It is uh, massive, 65 inches long, 8 inches in diameter. I mean, this prop is probably darn near 5 inches in diameter absolutely gorgeous brand new otw cylinder in there nobody's spoken for this yet um i'm excited to tear into it tweak it out get it running and uh throw that thing in the water it looks pretty darn cool and i'm hoping that with those x tails we get some really good uh, maneuverability out of it so i think 
you know, maybe a little scum line, a little weathering, um, get her up and running. Uh, I'm going to put a, a Horus 900 megahertz radio with that. So I think it is going to perform astoundingly well. And we're in the back. You can see Sharky all split open, just like a fish, like the fish he is. A little bit of details about the uh, mounting brackets that we have for the tail system there. Um, worked perfectly well. Everything looks really good. Uh, Logan's just bandaging up some um, little scrapes that he got. So when we ship him out to the new owner, he looks perfectionist. And he's uh, touching up some holes in the peck fins there. It was absolutely the highlight of Subfest, would you say? Absolutely. I think we, we actually made some little kids cry, didn't we? I mean, Nathan got pretty close. I think we almost made some adults cry. Yeah, they were pretty scared. <laughs> it was cool. We'll have some footage of that from Subfest here pretty shortly. We are boxing up the big Anglo Type 9. This is how we ship submarines. We do this a lot. So all of the rear dive planes are supported with styrofoam chunks. All of the deck parts are surrounded by styrofoam. You know, all the railings are secured. And then when we do bubble wrap layers, there's nothing that'll be putting any force on those parts. And so we're just reinforcing the forward dive planes now. We'll get all that done and then we'll be throwing this in a box. And Jason's doing up waybills. Super exciting. It's his favorite job. <laughs> End of the day, we are wrapping up. I am going to go to my new storage bay and get the keys for it. Uh, that's where I'm going to just hold all my extra inventory and boxes and stuff I don't use every day. Um, but some stuff that we got done today. Sharky is all tuned up, cleaned up, um, now ready to go. We painted the thrusters, so now they're even less conspicuous. They just kind of look like a random body part, kind of shading it there. So we're just waiting for confirmation back from the owner um, because we want to ship the watertight box for it, which is over there, um, outside, which means he's going to need to be responsible for putting it back in. So if he's not going to be responsible for that, then we'll do it. But uh, odds of it getting damaged are much, much, much higher. Cool thing is when we ship this, um, we just dismember him, pull this pin, the tail comes off, and it fits nicely in this little crate. Um, there's some cylinders that we're going to be working on later this week. And uh, the new heavy-duty watertight cylinder for that big uh, 96 scale Ohio. That's just curing right now. The silicone is curing and then we'll certify it tomorrow, be ready to go. And a, uh, a replacement 212 kit all ready to go here as well. Um, so yeah, we got lots going on, but uh, that is all we're gonna get done today, so. Hit the ground running tomorrow, get lots more done. Focus is on cylinders. We gotta get all those knocked out. It is Wednesday and uh, didn't really record much video for the morning because we were busy doing stuff, but I can summarize what we did and it was quite a bit. So uh, let's take a look first off at this little 212. So this is the finished, um, replacement hull for one that got smashed. Customer wanted to buy a new one. So there's no guts in it, it's just the hull. The finish actually, I, I think it turned out really cool. It's basically green. And then what I did is I rubbed pastel, blue pastel in there. This is the Italian version. It's like, it's a Mediterranean kind of uh, boat. And so it's got this blue green color to it. I think it turned out pretty cool. So we're gonna box that up get it shipped out tomorrow. Lots of work on cylinders. We've got um, a special, this is for a 48th Gato, so it needs a big motor. 
The issue that we used to have with this or that we found with our experience, the brushless motor that we were running, the 750 kilovolt uh, motor, was powerful enough to, to drive it, but brushless motors almost need to get a, a certain amount of inertia before that torque really kicks in. Um, which is not super cool because uh, if they don't reach that, if the water is too big on the props uh, or too forceful against the props, uh, they can't reach that and it just kind of like putters around. So we went with a big brushless motor on this, just like that 96 Ohio that we talked about before. Um, did kind of a unique thing with the gearbox here. So we have the gearbox bulkhead, the gears, and then a, a separate bulkhead on the back with oil lights. Um, and this works really, really well. It's a nice, smooth powertrain. So these make sure that these shafts don't flex and uh, strip gears. So working on that, that's gonna be coming along here uh, right away. Also working on the um, 48 ARC model Type 7. Now I've done videos on this before and uh, you can see this, whoever put this together, well, I know exactly who put it together, but I'm not gonna call them out, um, used the stock arm and the issue with that is it needs to move almost an inch for the proper 30 degree deflection on those stern planes and most servo setups aren't going to do that so you can see i've got in there that's the arm for the uh, dive planes there and then i put this little um, separate shaft in there and there's an arm that you can see and if i can move this over you'll be able to see it a little bit better um, so there it is right there you can see that one side is basically double the other so this is a linkage travel doubler um, for every say for example half inch on the top the bottom will move an inch and that is exactly what we want in order to get the proper amount of throw out here this has been kind of fun reworking but fun is in quotes um, the previous owner, none of the drivetrain was tightened down. There were big gobs of JB Weld all over it. I don't know what the thinking behind that was. But uh, I've gone ahead and adjusted the length of the drive shafts. They're all set up now, ready to go. And this is the setup for the cylinder. This is the 250 cylinder in the uh, ARC model boat. So this is uh, how it is basically going to sit. We Put the back end on we way we go and we got a little lockdown number right there so this is going to be uh, i think fairly quick once we're going to get all that finished up get it shipped out more cylinder parts over there and uh completed cylinder right here which we had to rework because jason forgot to install the uh ballast linkages i'll bet you he doesn't forget to do that again that was a fun uh reinstall the napkin that i got um was missing its dive planes it's fair water planes and so i created these in uh, 3d went ahead and printed them out and um, i'm gonna go ahead and see how they look on the boat so this is basically how they're gonna end up looking kind of like that it looks like probably well Probably, no, I was going to say I might round out this edge, but then as it moves, it might not work very well. So I think I'm just going to keep it like that. I think they're going to work really well. We'll get that all rigged up. Now, right now, the cylinder's not set up for that. Uh, I'll have to make a separate servo and uh, rig it up in the tower. I think I'll put a waterproof servo in there to make my life easy. So there you go. That was our Wednesday. Lots of things shipped out. Um, Jason took off to go drop them off. Um, we're getting close to packing up. I'm away all next week, by the way. Uh, I'm gonna be attending uh, an equipment show in Louisville, Kentucky in my previous life. Uh, I'm going with my wife, who is still general managing that company. And uh, we're gonna be in Louisville, Kentucky for a week. So Jason's gonna be here plugging away at cylinders. Um, but there you go. That is uh, our Wednesday. It is Thursday and uh, another situation where it's the end of the day. We did lots of stuff and we didn't share any of it with you. So apologies for that. Um, but we'll let you know what we worked on and we'll, uh, we'll show it to you. So let's take a look. Finish this thing up. So this we, we uh, were given at Subvest. And it was all kind of in pieces and we 
put it together. So um, we fused this piece of tubing to this and, and the silicone's just curing. That's gonna be all done. It's all tested, set up, ready to go. Um, customer just basically wanted us to set it up. So that's what we did a little bit this morning. And then we also sold this, which is something else we picked up at Subfest, but this is like ours until we sold it. Um, we did a lot on this, didn't we? What all did we do? Start at the front and work our way back. Uh, well, starting at the very outside, we've got the bellows installed, uh, waterproof connector on the end of the power. Yeah, so this is like an OTW kind of clone, but it's kind of shear line, you know, Bex model marine-esque. So this, this wasn't here, right? Nope, we installed the servo, we installed the holder. For mounting, the mounting bracket, yeah. Yep. Mounting bracket. We do a lot of fun things involving bending these back and forth. I'm kind of surprised they're still attached. Uh, besides that, we also had to shear off the back of the plate back here so this could scoot back a little bit. You can also see here where the servo was originally mounted, but we had to move it over here because the servo is connected to this. If it's connected to this, it can't do this. Right, yeah, that's the challenge with these things. The trays need to be connected to the end caps, but this, the trays connected to the ballast tank. So it makes life super interesting. And we installed the pump, reversible gear pump for the ballast system. I think there's an ESC under there. Yep. That's the ballast system. And then, yeah, this was the one where we cut the back. So this whole tray is part of this now. Yep, had to loop the wires back through. We've got these two servos hooked up. We've got uh, the rudder hooked up to the 82 already. The planes. Right, yeah, the planes. So we're, we're, yeah. <laughs> so we're just waiting on our speed controllers. We had to order some more speed controllers. Yeah. Almost. Uh, hopefully they'll be here tomorrow, but if not, we got lots of other stuff to keep us going. It's a cylinder work today. Cylinders are not exciting. I mean, this one looks cool. It's just... It, it does. It actually looks really cool. It's just not very human-friendly. <laughs> well, you know, there's pros and cons to every style of cylinder. Um, and uh, I got some more work done on the Type 7. So the cylinder is installed. <laughs> um, all the linkages are set up. I showed you some of that stuff yesterday. So we got our um, dive planes are set up and our rudders are all connected. The drive shafts are configured. Now what we need to do is shorten the front linkage for the dive planes because you can see it's, it's going to dive pretty hard there. But I think after that's done, we're going to be fitting out the deck and then running rigging and test and trim. And this is done. Uh, that should be off for her second maiden voyage, uh, third maiden voyage. Such a cool looking boat. Again, just a reminder, this is uh, not spoken for yet. So if you're a fan of the Type 7, uh, this could be yours. So with that, uh, another day... Uh, wraps up. We will be back in the shop tomorrow and uh, get some more stuff done. Friday morning uh, here at the shop and uh, two focuses today um, further to what we've been talking about before. Cylinders which uh, Jason is working on like crazy and uh, the Type 7. I want to get that up and listed hopefully by the end of the day because I'm gone for a week uh, and we could really use the cash after Subfest because that sucked the life out of my bank account. So Logan is uh, adjusting the forward linkages for the dive planes, um, making them adjustable so that they're going to be easy to uh, dial in perfectly once we get everything in there. You can see the remains of the torpedo system that's gonna be going with the boat. It's not gonna be functional. I repeat, it will not be functional. And don't ask me to make it so I don't have the time or the inclination, but you certainly can. 
Um, it's going to come with everything that you would need, uh, including four functional little gas torpedoes. So um, that should be really cool. What we're doing uh, over here, we're finalizing the cylinder and um, going to be connecting power and getting it all functioned so we can drop it in the boat and check all of the throttle, the rudders, the dive planes, uh, and all that fun stuff. And then it's just final cosmetics. And she'll be ready to go. All right, good news. We have the cylinder installed and ready to go. Actually, you know what? I'm going to fire this thing up. So again, this has 900 megahertz Free Sky Horus, which is an epic radio. And um, Welcome to Ethos. we got our remote fob. The lights are all fired up. They're nice and bright. They look really, really good. This isn't pushed down. This This will be down once we get it. But anyhow, we got our we got our rudders, we've got dive planes, we've got a throttle, wait, yeah, there we go. Nice and smooth. I uh, got four dive planes, and then uh, we've got our uh, ballast, which is on the switch right here. This thing is done, ready to go, just needs to be trimmed. And Logan is doing some detail work on these uh, antenna insulators for the uh, antennas. Do you remember what this stuff was? If you're talking about historically, they were, you said they were low frequency antennas? Antennas, yeah, but the, for, for our model, what are they? What is that stuff? Uh, it's not fishing. It's, it's called stretch magic. Uh, it's one millimeter black, and uh, kids use it to make uh, jewelry, like, you know, bracelets and stuff like that. But it, if you stretch it, it's got tension. You know, so if you use thread, like comes in the kit, um, that sags over time. And if you use cable, it's got no give to it. So if there's, you know, any uh, change in the overall distance for flexing or whatever, you end up with saggy antennas, and that's no good. So this works really good. It looks beautiful. This is a cool-looking boat. Um, when we get back, uh, we'll be testing it, but it's ready to go. If someone wants this thing, it's going to come with the radio. It's going to come, uh, obviously, with the boat. Um, brand new 250 series dual shaft cylinder and the aluminum carry case uh, for the boat, which is absolutely gorgeous. So that was cool. Um, Jason just knocked out this cylinder. That's going, I think that's that's the one that's going in a sea view, isn't it? Mobia uh, sea view? Yeah, yeah. Mobia sea view. So that'll be going out first thing Monday morning. Yep, yep. Yep, it's a tight fit, but it but it does fit in there. Uh, and we're just waiting on speed controllers to finish that up. So, so far, good progress. It's Friday afternoon. Uh, quitting time. I got a hair appointment because I need to look presentable for my trip next week. Um, reminding you, I am gone all next week. Uh, Jason and Logan are going to be holding down the fort. Maybe. We'll see how much gets done when I get back. Um, I think we actually had a pretty good week considering we lost a day traveling back from Subfest. Yeah. Um, it was a great event. Uh, I've got pictures up on my website under the events and subfests. Uh, there's maybe 50 photos up there so far. More, more coming in. Uh, give me a couple weeks at least for a summary video, though. That's a lot of footage, and it takes a lot of time and energy to edit. So bear with me on the video. Please don't ask when it's coming. It's coming as quick as I can. Um, and as I get more photos, I'll throw those up on the website, too. So check that out um but yeah we got lots done lots of cylinders three i shipped two we built two other three i think about five this week so far yeah and then we got that and then i got like parts that i'm working on we got that that uh, otw clone thing to oh. finish out we're just waiting on yeah. speed controllers which should have been delivered today no. thanks amazon 
we'll see. Found out the claim checks that uh, I was supposed to get from UPS, they mailed to Florida <laughs> for some weird reason, and that recutting them is going to take four to six weeks. Ooh. That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks, UPS. Um, yeah, and then we got Type 7 done. You did a lot of work on that. Well, a little bit, mostly cosmetic. Yeah, well, that's still, it's really that was all I was doing. We outfitted it with the new cylinder, so it just needs final test and trim. But uh, if you're interested in it, it is now up live uh, and ready to go. Uh, we got it paired up with that beautiful Horus radio system, which is turning out to be absolutely awesome. Uh, how many converts do we have at Subfest to 900 megahertz? Four, at least. Yeah, I Four think so. Somebody bought one like as soon as they saw it yeah and then we got uh when we uh were there we had a 900 megahertz seminar which was kind of cool too we talked about that um and then when i get back we're moving shops we'll talk about Delphin. oh yeah that'll be important we'll talk about that but, the, but yeah moving shops so when i get back we're going to be taking a few days packing the shop up moving the shop getting the new shop set up clearing the shop out so not a lot will probably end up getting done over the next three weeks ish. Jason's got to get his new shop set up for yeah. manufacturing. So we'll see. We may play with those dates a little bit. We got wiggle room. We don't need to be out until the end of October, but you need to be proactive. out by the end of October. <laughs> proactive about it. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah. Jason mentioned the uh, Delphin. So due to a series of uh, circumstances. Uh, the original owner that uh, commissioned us to build that thing uh, changed his mind at the last minute and walked away with our little 212. And made him much happier. Made him much happier. He was ecstatic, to say the least. So we walked away with the Delphin. It's still here. Um, I think I mentioned that in an earlier video. But we have plans for this. Now, if you guys uh, have been following me for a while, uh, you'll remember that last year we did something kind of cool for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which is October. Um, we put together a super cool boat, which was a permit last year, and, and it came to us pink, and that's where the idea came from. I think it was actually you or Carolyn that... I think it was your wife. Oh, it was Renee. That was right. It was Renee. Sorry, Renee. It was you. Um, so we uh, auctioned it off for uh, charity. So a portion of those proceeds were donated to uh, Breast Cancer Awareness. And we're gonna do the same thing this year and the Delphin is what it is gonna be. Just cause it's a kind of a unique boat, I think it's gonna lend itself well to an alternate paint scheme. Um, so it is gonna be pink. Um, if you did not have a chance to see it, I have got some really cool footage and I'll put it up once we get it finished uh, of that Delphin plowing through the water at Subfest. That thing is insane. So uh, much fun. If you want a different boat that is just turn it on, throw it in the water, and have a blast, this is it. Mm -hmm. um, and the way it'll work is we'll have like a form on there and you submit a bid. Whatever bid you want. You could put $10 in. You're not going to get it. But you can put a $10 bid in. I think the last year it went for the permit went for 3200 yeah, three, somewhere in there, yeah. um, which is awesome because again a lot of that money is going to uh, towards charity so watch for that coming out uh, soon when we get back we'll get that thing um, listed and you guys will be able to take a look so save your shekels for uh, a really cool pink uh, dolphin oh yeah Sharky was the hit of the of the show too but he's packed and UPS never came to pick him up so a bit early varies in his times. So. Right. Well, hopefully it gets out. We'll have to make sure it gets out. All right. It's time for the joke of the week. You guys are pitiful. Pitiful! I've never seen a hundred people send me the same joke. What's long and hard and full of semen? A submarine. Like, come on, people. A little creativity here. Yeah, we're not six. Uh, I think I heard that one when I was six. <laughs> So uh, I could not find a submarine joke, so I, I heard a, a different one, and um, I'll, I'll tell it now. It has nothing to do with submarines. Uh, it has to do with golfing. Are you ready? Sure. All right. A man and his wife are out on the uh, golf course playing golf together. 
a uh, tee up on the on the ninth hole, and he blasts the ball, hooks it severely to the right, or slice. It's either hook or a slice to the right. I don't remember which. It goes into the forest, into a farmer's yard, and ends up landing on the far side of an old barn. He goes over there and he's like, well, I'll just pick the ball up and I'll take my drop and uh, I'll, I'll play it from out there. And the wife goes, well, you know, you're a pretty good golfer. If you open up the doors, you could probably blast it right out the doors, get it further down the fairway and you won't have to lose your stroke. And he's like, oh man, I don't know. Okay, all right, we'll do it. So he opens up the doors, lines up his shot, takes it, it ricochets off the wall, strikes his wife right in the side of the head and kills her. She falls to the ground dead. A year later, the man is playing on the same golf course with a friend. And same hole, tees up on the, on the ninth hole, blasts the ball and wouldn't you know, sails to the right, straight behind the exact same barn shaking his head and he's walking through he's like I'm just going to pick this ball up and I'm going to put it on the fairway and take my stroke and the friend's like well you're a pretty good golfer why don't you open up the door and blast it out and that way you won't lose your stroke and the, the, the man shakes his head sadly he's like no he's like last time I played there I tried that and I duffed the shot I got an 8 on the hole <laughs> All right, that's it. That sounds like a want, want, want. Yeah. You're, maybe you have to be a golfer to appreciate that. But yeah, but, I'm not. <laughs> at any rate, that wraps up the week from your friends at the Dry Docks. Um, I'll be checking in uh, not next week, but the week following. Um, Tapper, cool. Have a great weekend. And uh, we'll see you guys later. <laughs>